everybody, and welcome to Blue Jays today. With your boys, we always got something to say with the Toronto Blue Jays. Tons of stuff to talk about today. The lads, we were actually in Pittsburgh this weekend watching the Pittsburgh Steelers take on the Green Bay Packers, but there's been a lot of Toronto Blue Jays buzz going around. A new coach. Bichette trade talks. I don't know Whoa, what the hell's going on there. Uh, some free agency updates. Tons of stuff to get into. Y'all know the drill. Hit the like, smash subscribe button, and leave us your questions in the comments down below. All right, man. Let's get into tons it. Tons of stuff to get into, dude. First things first. Welcome back. Welcome back. D Marlo Hale. What's up, dude? He just couldn't <laughs> stay away. No, no. Tomorrow, Lowe Hale, for those who are also I apologize, my voice is really messed up from the weekend at Pittsburgh. Uh, tomorrow, Lowe Hale, he was around when John Gibbons was on the team. Mm -hmm. That was a different culture, different energy, right? And, and hey, I, I like seeing a familiar face. Whatever guys we brought in for, to help out the team now, mm -hmm. it didn't work, guys. Mm -hmm. So, tomorrow, Lowe Hale, he's the man. He's back. Um... I love it, man. And well, like what, but the, what's this? What do you take of this, though? Real quick, well, go ahead. So well, I, I, just, I wanted to come in here and say, okay. like, I love, I love the fact that you, you know, you're kind of cycling it back to that John Gibbons era, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it's almost like they they want to get back to their roots mm -hmm. in that regard, you know? Like, there were a lot of things that that team, even though that team and that era was not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, there were a lot of things that they did right. That mm -hmm. this team. This 2023 Toronto Blue Jays and, you know, 2022, <laughs> 2021, they didn't. You know what I mean? Like, they, they just didn't, right? So, bringing somebody in to kind of, uh, I don't know, change the culture. That's exactly what it is. Bring, it's a culture thing. Yeah, like, bring bring back a little bit of that John Gibbons culture. Mm -hmm. I think that's what this is all about. And I think, I, I mean, I, I think it, it is a great idea to to do that. And if mm -hmm. DeMarlo Hale's the guy, like, make it happen. Dude, okay, so what do you what do you take of this that he's going to be the associate manager what does that even mean, bro? Well, the, I'm the associate manager. Yeah, I mean, like, somebody <laughs> correct me in the chat, but, like, is is this a baseball thing? Like, do, do we have I've this? Is, is associate manager something that we just have? Because, yeah, I've literally never heard of this before. To me, that kind of says that the yeah. Toronto Blue Jays and the management <laughs> and everything like that, I don't know if they have 100% faith in Mr. John Schneider, even though Dude. everything that they've come out and said is in full support of him. When you come and you give somebody the associate manager position, saying, "Hey, you're gonna come in. You're you're bringing somebody in from the past as well. Uh -huh. and like you're gonna be the associate manager. It's almost like they want him to help groom John Schneider into the next John Bro, Gibbons. You know what that tells me? It tells me that the Blue Jays, as an organization, actually don't have a lot of faith in what John Schneider's doing. Mm, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, first of all. When you think about the mess up too with the game two wildcard pulling Jose Burrows, apparently that wasn't all on John Schneider. There were mm -hmm. other factors involved. And then you're bringing in these associate managers. I, this to me feels like there is no manager, which right. is kind of upsetting. We don't really have a guy that's like clearly leading the team. You need to have a manager lead the team. We already have, well, we have a collection of guys. I mean, let's let's face it, right? Like John John Schneider, he was promoted into that role, but he was never he was never meant to be a a lead manager. You know, like that was never his thing, right? He was promoted into it. No. He had one incredible stretch in in the end of 2022, and then you kind of saw the other shoe drop in 2023. And I think mm. that they just realized that it's like, okay, there's there's stuff there, there's stuff that we like about him. There are some things that he does really well. But he's just maybe not there yet to be the right. full guy and lead a squad all yeah. the way. Let's bring in somebody who has been here before, who has been on a winning ball club, who knows the right type of culture to have a winning team. Let's have him come in and kind of babysit John Schneider. Even though he's going to be the associate manager and John Schneider will still be the main manager, it almost feels like a... You're going to come in and babysit this guy. Well, I mean, it felt like that last year. I think they're just getting in new people to come in and, and, and kind of just make decisions for John Schneider. Like, yes. Clear, like, like, which is kind of, you know, if I'm, John, if I'm John Schneider, like, my team isn't really giving me a lot of faith to do a whole lot right now. So mm -hmm. what, what, what is your role here? Mm -hmm. You're just a personnel person, right? You're there for the people. You had the kids mm -hmm. grow up through you, right? When they come through the minor league system through your team. Is, so what are you? Yeah, I, I don't even know who, what he, what his role is anymore. Well, I, I love what I love what Patrick Harvey says here too, and I think this is a great this is a great comparison or just a, a great shout out mm. here. Maybe this is a bit of a backup here, saying, "Hey, if by yeah. mid season it's not working, 
We know that this guy yeah. will work. We know that he can get mm-hmm. it done. Mm-hmm. Let's have him come in, and mm-hmm. you know, if we have to get rid of John Schneider, okay, fine. Like maybe this is maybe this is a bit of a message saying like, hey, dude, like you would better show up next year. Right. You would better lead this team deeper into the playoffs than we've ever yeah. been before in a long period of time, or else you're gone. Uh, that that could be true too, man. I mean, I wanted to make one more comment on this whole like managing stuff it's like all this micromanaging is going on right mm-hmm, here like mm-hmm. first of all you also had Don Mattingly that we didn't even have this brought up and I don't even even talked about it on the podcast Don Mattingly apparently is going to take over more offensive stuff actually I, I did I did bring did up that bring tweet up? yeah so so shout out over there real quick but apparently yes uh yes. DeMarlo Hale he is going to be focusing on the run prevention through defense that's kind of what they're looking at right. there so you know his role is going to be primarily doing a lot of what the team was very good at this this past year you know having mm-hmm. run prevention mm-hmm. whereas Don Mattingly he is now going to be moving over to that okay. offensive coordinator which, position, which I'm, I mean, uh, I'm actually okay with that. No, like, no, I love it. I mean, Don Mattingly is a legend. He's a Hall of Famer. Yeah. But, like, it's just funny because you have all these, like, new titles you're never seeing. Like, it was just the hitting coach. Yeah. The, the pitching coach. The, the manager of the bench. And then you have all these new titles because I, I don't know if it's like we're afraid of hurting these people's feelings. Mm. Like, clearly you did not do the job. I think that's why they're bringing in some more personnel because they obviously we did not do the job, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So, but they don't want to fire the guys who have those jobs. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. All I'm not like a not, coordinator. Yeah. Never heard of that before in my life. It's not like I want these people to like, you know, be out of a job. Like I'm not like coming for their heads like that. I'm just saying it's funny uh, the way they're managing this. Yeah. It's really no, weird. No, it's very much a Toronto Blue Jays yeah. type type of way to go about. You don't it. want to hurt anybody's feelings. No, for real. I you mean, know? even after you, you saw them reassign, reassign Dave Hudgens and not give him the full chop, right? I mean, at the end of the day, that was a dude who was just simply not getting his job done at all, mm-hmm. and they didn't even fire him. They just moved him over somewhere else, and he's dealing with. I mean, I think he's dealing with um with a prospect development now. Or, you know, it's just, like, yeah. developing players. Yeah. Like, do I really want that guy developing players? Probably not. But, you know, for whatever reason, he's protected and, you know, does something yeah. over there, they say. Either way, yeah. DeMarl O'Hale coming back in, folks. Mm-hmm. I think both Adam and I are saying, like, we are about that yeah, move. I sure. love it. I want to bring the old culture back with, like, while marrying it with the yeah. new culture as well. The only move that would have been better is bringing back John Gibbons. Oh, for real, <laughs> for real. That would that would actually create. Yo, I've actually such I've literally culture. seen some of some of our fans, some Toronto Blue Jays yeah. fans, you know, be like messaging this dude on Instagram, and be like, "Bro, we need you back, dude. <laughs> yeah, we need yeah, you man. back." Listen, yeah. I, I he was at the end of the day, like, again, he was not a perfect manager by any stretch of the imagination, but he brought that dude, firepower, dude. And, one I, of the and, best. I, and I just feel like. Like there's something about that that the the culture of the team. Everybody hated the Toronto Blue Jays, and and, uh, and, and, and like everybody around yeah, the league, yeah. you know. And part of that, I feel, was the firepower that was John Gibbons. Well, know? I think well, I think people hated the Jays back then because it was honestly firepower of Jose Bautista. Him as well. You know what I mean? But it was it was through the it was but everyone the likes, whole. Everyone likes John Gibbons though. I don't think no one like. You know, I like think that I think that Toronto Blue Jays fans loved John Gibbons. Oh, yeah. I think that there was there was a uh, uh, you know a mentality throughout the the entire clubhouse of, of his teams that it's like we're we're hard, you know, like we yeah. are we're hard, man. Like we're on that field, like we're you know that is the enemy over there, mm. you know. Nobody wants to play us. Mm, right. That's right. something that he brought in that I don't think that John Schneider does. No, John Schneider, he's not even he's not bringing anything right now, bro. <laughs> like like all I know about John Schneider is. He doesn't actually do the job of managing other people or deciding that before the game even begins. Yeah. So what the hell are you doing? No, I he's a face. Completely, you know? <laughs> completely agree, guys. Let us know your thoughts about that in the comments down below, everybody. Next, we have got to get to mm-hmm. some kind of wild rumors going on right here about trading Bo Bichette. But first That's things first, nuts. let's shout out one of the sponsors of this video. Yeah. Time for two covered bridge potato chips. Made with ingredients from the St. John River Valley and cooked carefully in a local factory. They've got tons of great flavors like smoke and barbecue, sea salt, and sour cream and onion. Get a taste of this delicious flavor cooked the old-fashioned way. Now, back to the content. Shout out to Cover Bridge for being absolutely electric, everybody. They are phenomenal. You definitely want to check them out. What the hell is this? Yeah. What the hell is this? For the 180 people in here, like up the stream. Let us know in the comments. What the hell is this, folks? Uh, Bo Bichette, a potential target for the Dodgers. This is something that was came out very recently that people are talking about. Mm-hmm. And apparently Dodgers fans, uh, I mean, because again, like this is this is done by a Dodgers beat reporter, a Dodgers yeah. analyst, or whatever. But 
apparently they're just thinking that they can pursue Bo Bichette, and that's just something that they could do. I don't know where the hell they get off with this, but right. you know, what, what, what are your thoughts on this? No, no, no this is straight up uh, you know, a privilege, coming from a place of privilege. Oh, we're the Dodgers. We can go get Trey Turner. Mm-hmm. Oh, we can just go get uh, uh, you know, Max Scherzer. We can get all these pieces, pieces mm-hmm. that we want. Mm-hmm. But you're not getting Boba Shep because no. they're, you're assuming that, oh, the Blue Jays, they lost or a bad team. Oh, they're going to maybe retool and restart. If you sell off Boba Shep, that's basically the end of an era of a Blue Jay winning culture. Like, like, you know what I mean? Like, you trade him off. What do you have left in your team right now? Yeah. What do you really have, right? This is this means literally nothing. And the fact that they even entertained this is just ridiculous. William Adamas, however, that makes sense because in this article he also talks about William Adamas trading for a shortstop. He makes a lot more sense because you look over at the Brewers mm-hmm. and they don't have the money to even get Willie Adamas back or even pay for his last arbitration year. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, we were talking about trading for him. That's what the Brewers do. Jays, we don't do that. We don't flip guys. Yeah. They're going to help us win right now. No, I mean, th- this to me feels like it's coming from a place of complete ignorance, yes. right? This is somebody who's looking on the surface and going, oh, they got swept in the wild card series. L- who's their best player? Oh, a shortstop? We need a shortstop. Yeah, Let's yeah. get him. Like, it, there's no logic sense involved in that, man. The Toronto Blue Jays cannot afford to be trading away arguably their best bat. That is our problem right ridiculous. now. We need more hitters. We need better hitters right now. And they're talking about potentially trading away Bo Bichette. I mean, the only way that you could even entertain something like that, and we're see- seeing in the mm-hmm. chat right now, is... You know, you offer up Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts, and okay, <laughs> then maybe we can talk. But oh, like, God, yeah. obviously, that would never happen. Yeah. And I, I think in this, you know, this this article, they don't necessarily even go into depth as to what no. it is that they are going to give up. But Boba Shed, he's valid a lot, guys. You know, I don't necessarily love this site. I think it's okay, yeah. but it just gives you a, a kind of a benchmark as to where he's valued at. Trade simulator is what we're talking about here, everybody. Currently, they're listing him at a 55.1 value. Uh, just so you guys know, that is pretty high. That That's is a lot of value. High. But I didn't need this site to tell me that this guy is really damn good at baseball. He's got two years left on his deal that are already extended and yep. locked in. Yep. So you know exactly how much money you're going to have to pay, which is also something that is valuable to a team. And the Toronto Blue Jays, if they were to trade him away, who the f*** is starting at shortstop? Who would... Who? Well, you got Espinal. Yeah, literally. You got we're, oh, we're Madison Barsher. Maybe it's the time to restart yeah, the clock. Yeah, you know? we would oh. be doing. We would be running it. Uh, or Elvis Martinez at third. Addison Barger at second. Uh, or, or at shortstop. Excuse me. Yeah. Espinal's in the mix somewhere too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, this no. just does not make any sense. I, I don't even. I hate that even. I'm giving this even like a, a light. It would never happen. Is there a situation where like we would trade Bo Bichette? At all. Yeah, for Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman. Right, right, exactly. So no is the no, answer, because no. they would never offer that up, right? Literally, I would argue that probably Bo Bichette is the one player who was so far removed from being traded, right? You can mm. start to, and I say start, and it's still a long stretch, but you can start to entertain the, the, the maybe the, the principle or the thought of Guerrero getting traded. You can maybe start to think about that. Bo Bichette, with his deal already locked in mm-hmm. after the performances that, he ha- that he's had literally his entire career, there's just no way. Yeah, like, you can maybe start entertaining uh, Vladdy, but I think they're in the same boat, if I'm going to be honest. Uh, yeah, like, I mean, like... Th- there's no chance. You trade him away, you're basically saying, restart the clock. Like, look, we could lose next year. That's okay. Like, no. Nah, it's got two years of winning. And we'll figure out this offseason how longer that window gets. Yeah. But uh, those guys, definitely not trading. Yeah, exactly. And if we believe anything that the Toronto Blue Jays have come out and said, which is that we want to remain competitive for this window of time, mm-hmm. trading away Bo, trading away Vlad, there's no way that you can do that and mm-hmm. then also get better. Unless, yeah. you know, if somebody's projecting in here like a Juan Soto deal, I guess maybe, but, I, you know, like, we're talking fantasy land at this yeah. point, right? Like, what would you prefer to... Actually, what would you prefer? Two years of Boba Shed or one year of Juan Soto? If we're just in fantasy land right now. Uh, and based on what this current situation of the team right now, uh, probably two years of Boba Shed. I think the war would add up, yeah. I think probably, yeah, I mean, probably two years as yeah. well. Like, it'd be, you know, again, Juan Soto is extremely tantalizing, yeah. and I want that superstar caliber player, but... I mean, yeah. Bo's going to get it done consistently. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The defense has gotten a lot better this year. I think he's going to get a lot more stolen base opportunities. Mm-hmm. You know, and again, clubhouse guy changing faces around like that. It's just, you know, 
doesn't necessarily work out all the time. Yeah, no, right? I, I completely agree. Hey, big shout out to Carol B right now with a dono. What's up, Carol? Mm -hmm. What's shout out up? to Carol right there for the two dollar donation. Hi, how's it going, boys? Uh, what what does this mean? Well, uh, <laughs> it means that there's some Dodgers fans out there who do not know what yeah. is going on. I have no I have no qualms with the Toronto Blue Jays trading away some people from their starting lineup this winter. I you know I have no qualms with that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Boba Shad not going to be mm -mm. one of them unless not it's you know literally something insane exactly you, not never, you never can say this guy's untouchable unless he's literally like show him why, why would you ever trade him yes um uh, real quick guys another shout out to a sponsor of this video because we also got to check in on some free agents that we're currently looking at that are also getting interest from al rivals so we're gonna get into that in just mm -hmm. a moment guys mm -hmm. so real quick shout out Whoa, time for your daily Betway breather. A quick reminder that the best place to bet is on Betway. Must be 19 years of age or older to play in collaboration with iGaming Ontario. Please bet responsibly. Now, back to the content. Yeah, shout out, shout out, guys. If you're sports bettors, check out Betway. Now, betting on where Cody Bellinger is going to land, it looks like he's going to be landing somewhere competitive, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And it looks like that... Uh, he could potentially land in the AL East. That's not on the Jays. And that's because you've got John Morosi coming out here saying that apparently the Yankees, they're looking at Bellinger and they're being very, very serious about him, bro. Yeah, no, but, I mean, this this makes a lot of sense, right? The New York Yankees, they are dying out there in the outfield. Mm -hmm. Brian Cashman actually came out, I think it was today or, or yesterday, and he was talking about John Carlos Stanton. Mm. And he literally came out and said about his own player, uh, injuries are part of his game. He is going to miss time next year. Wow, yeah. Literally. That's something that you this guy that, came man. out and said, right? It's like he knows that his his own guys are, right. are a problem right now, right, dude. Right. They need people in the outfield. They need more bats. They realized this past year Aaron Judge is incredible, but he cannot win you. He cannot single-handedly take you to the playoffs. And that's with a, a who is going to be the Cy Young winner in yeah. Garrett Cole, right? That's, yeah. you, you cannot build your team on two players Cody Bellinger going to the New York Yankees it just feels like something that that would make perfect sense mm -hmm. dude he's coming off of a phenomenal year we've talked about him time and time yeah. again that he'd be incredible on in Toronto Blue Jays and if you put him in Yankee Stadium that guy is going to get lefty a lefty with power that that's going to be dangerous that's what and, they love dude yeah oh I know and it's it's going to be basically game over you had Cody Bellinger you get a couple more years maybe the Martian's going to miss a lot of next year that's really unfortunate mm -hmm. from a Yankee mm -hmm. stand like mm -hmm. I feel bad that they uh they had to lose Marshall yeah like you never that. want the, anyone no. to go down to an injury like that and especially early in your career like and, that and yeah and like all the excitement and like he actually changed the Yankee season for that time that he was up like yeah he actually they started winning games that was their gone. that was their David Schneider day. exactly and then look what happens very unfortunate like if they can get him back eventually they have Bellinger, you still have Judge doing well. Maybe get some a few guys breaking out prospect wise, make a couple good signings. They're back to the Bronx Bombers, yeah, and that's dangerous for the Toronto Blue Jays. We well, got to make sure we get them. Yeah, it's a hundred percent dangerous too because this is the first time in I think maybe the entirety of the time that I've been a Toronto Blue Jays fan where you didn't need to worry about the New yep. York Yankees last year. Yep, yep. I don't want to worry about them anymore, folks, because as we know. Baltimore, Gunnar Henderson, shout out to Gunnar Henderson. Yeah. He won the Rookie of the Year. Baltimore Orioles are absolutely stacked. They have the most prospects in the entire MLB, the, the top prospects, yeah. and now they're going to get an additional draft yeah. pick yeah. because Gunnar Henderson won Rookie of the Year. Wow. That team is going to be stacked for maybe a decade Forever. or more because yeah. they also have tons of money to spend, and I would not be shocked in the slightest to see them go out and throw their hat in the ring mm -hmm. for a Ballinger or, or a Soler, yeah. whoever, right? So they're going to be there. Tampa Bay's always going to be there. Boston, even though I don't think that they're going to be super competitive, they're going to be a thorn in our they're, ass. They're going to come back around. They're, sure they're they going to eventually be good again. They Absolutely. are. They're going to find a way, dude. New York Yankees, <laughs> I, I loved seeing them down and out, oh, dude. I loved yes. seeing them down and out. And if they go out and they have a big offseason, like a lot of people are projecting, that is, that is going to, you know, there's realistic, there's a chance that you could see the Toronto Blue Jays be fighting out of that that last spot in yes. the AL East. Well, dude. if I'm gonna if I'm gonna take my complete bias out of it, I think one of the worst teams in the AL right now for going into next year is the Toronto Blue Jays. AL or AL East? Oh, AL East. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, like, we still got Oakland. Yeah. We still got a few other shit squads. It's, so it's Boston for sure. They'd be my last one. Mm. I think the Yankees are gonna come through and they're gonna be better. Um, but yeah, the Blue Jays. There's no reason to think that like based on where we're at right now, everyone leaving in the free agency. Blue Jays are one of the worst teams. Yeah. Wow. How I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> I am very surprised here? that the Toronto Blue Jays are not more seriously linked 
to Cody Bellinger. Are you surprised by that? Well, like, I know that we've been pursuing him heavy. Like, we, he's the, probably the guy I think that I would believe the most out of all the rumors that we we're pursuing him heavy, heavy. Because mm-hmm. we've been pursuing him. So, uh, I'm not... Look, just to rephrase your question real quick. Well, I said, are you surprised that we're not that we're not more associated with him? Because right now, see, I, I think we are New York as... Yankees are coming out as the favorites. I think they said the Cubs as well is Cody Bellinger. Yeah, like those are the top choices but I think, right now. But I think like we all are kind of associated with him. I hope so, heavily. dude. I mean, I hope so because again, like there's been so many rumors that has come out from the Toronto Blue Jays right now. It's hard to fully piece together exactly who it is that they are mm-hmm. fully locked and loaded for. Cody Bellinger going to the Yankees, that is not something that we want to see. And if you're the Toronto Blue Jays management, mm. you got to be looking over there. And, I mean, let's talk, let's let's have that swing yeah. go in our direction because yeah. it is a big swing, uh, you know, wins, losses, everything, if he goes there instead of coming here. No, absolutely. And hopefully we hear about that soon, guys, because I think we have – man, where's, when's Matt Chapman going to get his uh, call? It should, it should be, be like tonight or tomorrow. Yeah, like we should real, know about this actually. soon, right? Yeah, we should be talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but tomorrow, guys, we'll probably have something going on. Like whenever we hear about Matt Chapman, the reason why I bring him up because you got to wait for that, like, all the qualifying offers to either be declined or accepted, mm-hmm. and then you're going to start to see the dominoes fall. And one of the biggest dominoes that you got to fall for the entire market to be set – Shohei Otani. Of man. course, dude. Yeah, yeah, that is who we want to talk about next, everybody. The Toronto Blue Jays have been, you know, I guess you could say seriously, uh, you know, associated <laughs> with Shohei Otani. But I mean, take everybody that as a great, take that as a grain of salt, yeah. you know. Uh, however, some interesting news came out today. Shohei Otani not as concerned with geography during free agency. What he is concerned about is going to a competitive yes. team. We also got some stuff coming out about, you know, some some squads that are l- looking at him. Yeah. New York Mets, who have always <laughs> been the team that are going out and buying everybody, right? For the last few years, it has been New York Mets, just Steve Cohen throwing money at yep. anyone and everything. Yep. They're actually out of the mix right yeah. now. <laughs> so I think that's got to do with the fact of, A, um... I don't know if they're going to be competitive next no, year. No, no, no. They, they even said in articles that, like, they're not. They're rebuilding. They're, they're rebuilding, trying to do a quick dude. rebuild, and, <laughs> which and, is hilarious. And two, bro. they're already spending a shitload of money. You know, so I don't know what the hell's going on there, dude. But the Toronto Blue Jays, yeah. do you think it's a good or a bad thing that geography is not associated for Shohei Otani's decision? I think it's a great thing. I think it's a great thing. Because mm-hmm. it's always been geography was our biggest, weakest Kind of, that was our biggest con mm-hmm. at Toronto Blue Jays. We're, we're cold. We're in Canada. you got to go through uh, customs all the time. Right. You know, like all this crap. You're getting taxed a lot. Like, no one wanted to come up here and play, right? But with Otani, that doesn't matter. So our biggest con is gone. However, he wants to play on a winning team. Yeah. <laughs> Do I look at the Toronto Blue Jays as a, as a team that where I'm like, yeah, this is a winning team, and if I join them, I can absolutely take them to the next level, which he would. Yeah. But if I'm Otani, I could choose any team. Why would I choose the lesser? You know you what know, I mean? I think, if, I think if you are the Toronto Blue Jays, I think your biggest selling point has got to be the pitching staff. Yeah. Because he's been, oh, his yeah. whole career, oh, he's yeah. been on the LA Angels. Never once yeah. have they had a seriously good pitching staff. He's yeah. always, by himself, yeah. had to lead the way on the mound. Yep. This yep. time, well, if you need, you can take an extra day's rest, or yep. you know, we we can we will give you the support because you have Gosman mm-hmm. and you have Burrios and you have Kikuchi and you got Bassett, right? You got a bunch of stuff in the mix Manoa, right there. Manoa, yeah. one day, for real, right? Like, if you did want to, and I mean, this has to be a conversation that they have when they're when they're going through and making their deals and everything like that. But if you did want to only be a hitter moving forward, maybe that's a conversation that we could have, right? Right, right. But you've never had that luxury because you have had to single-handedly mm-hmm. literally hit your team and also pitch your mm-hmm. team into Ws. We as the Toronto Blue Jays could provide you a top five oh. pitching rotation, yep. 40 home runs, 45 home runs from you in the lineup. We're talking about what? Yeah. You know, five, six, seven more Ws than we had last year just yeah. with that guy alone. And I, th- and I think, uh, you know, immediately uh, he's not going to be able to pitch for 2024. Mm-hmm. So that makes sense too, where he feels like, okay, I'm at least like if I go to this team, I'm going to contribute with my bat in a big way and I'm not going to be letting the team down because they have such a great staff already. And plus, if you're trying to give out Manoa another chance, right now you still got five starters. Yeah. So it makes sense with Kikuchi leaving in 2025. Boom, easy, repla- easy replacement. Just put in Shohei Otani. No, I mean, easiest, that, yeah. that does make a whole lot of sense. Yeah. So shout out to Ben's Pitching Clips right here with a $5 donation saying, not concerned with geography pack to the NPD. <laughs> I don't think the NPD is going to be offering him up $500, $600 no. million dollars like somebody no. in the MLB would. I mean, no. if they did, maybe he does go back there. But, I mean, yeah. somebody who's going to need to pay for him is going to need to offer mm-hmm. that much. And that is probably the biggest concern for the Toronto Blue Jays is because, mm-hmm. obviously, you want to have this guy. You want to get the entire country of Japan 
onto mm-hmm. your fan base, and that is something that Shohei Otani will provide, just something that no other player can bring you, you know? Yeah. I was using this comparison the other day, but um, Lionel Messi, he goes over to Miami in, yeah. in the MLS. Yeah. I had never once heard about Miami ever before, nope. like their soccer like team, the literally soccer ever team, yeah. yeah just ne- you never heard of and now you know you see you know like big big media outlets like complex and you know other other big media places posting about this team yep. because Lionel Messi's there and he brings yeah. over such such a fan base where you you get that and they kind of like put that team on the map Shohei Otani I'm not going to say that he would put the Toronto Blue Jays on the map. But he but put he sh- on the world map. He sh- yeah. yeah. He was yeah. sure as hell help. You know, like <laughs> yeah. for the, the entire world to see, that is something that that dude brings. So, I mean, even though you would effectively be giving up the opportunity to sign back both Bo and Vlad, uh, maybe even F- both of them. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I think it's you, you change your yeah. mental it's, mentality. Exactly. Right? You're talking about extending the window. Okay, you have two years with these young guys. You do well. Then you start thinking about, okay, now who do we build around Otani? Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. It changes your whole team. And I think the next two years of Otani comes to Toronto would be the most lit years ever because you could have like this young competitive window. It'd be a fantasy, man. 100%. Now, let's touch on base on reality. Is it gonna happen? I mean, great. Are you feeling more like confident? I mean, that I, I like odds going up. I like the the fact that he's come out and he said this. Now, this could all be a media play, right? This could all be a media play because now you have some other teams on the East Coast saying, "Oh, maybe we do have a shot." Yeah. Because for the longest time, everyone was like, "Oh, it's gonna be on no the way. West Coast." Yeah. Dodgers, Angels, Giants. That's mm-hmm. it, right? But now he's basically opened the door. I will say, uh, shout out to Smooth Brown, Matt, coming in here and saying, Blue Jays will land one of Otani or Bellinger because the front office is under an immense amount of pressure. I think that's true. Yeah. I think that's true, right? I'll tell you right now, even if we suck next year, even if we suck, Ross Atkins will have saved his job if he gets Shohei Otani. Yes. That is a job-saving, extension-worthy managerial move that's one of those things when you're when you're older and you're retiring you have a photo of you handing otani his blue jays jersey correct signed by otani like that's your that's, that's the biggest your moment legacy you've ever done. moment dude yep. and that's also another thing that you got to think about with Shohei otani right you're seeing a bunch of a bunch of managers right now or, or a bunch of um you know gms gms yeah, excuse yeah, me yeah. uh they're looking at their legacy <laughs> yeah, and they're saying yeah. if i'm the guy to sign Shohei otani yeah. You know, yeah. they're not only are they going to put a statue of Otani in this yeah. freaking city, they're going to put a statue of me with him signing the contract. Yeah. Dude, you, you were talking to me earlier today on the way back from Pittsburgh. Uh, Braves, they look like they could be a favorite to get Otani. They do. They Alex do. Anthopoulos, one of the greatest GMs in my time watching baseball. Yeah. Um, that would be a great move. If that he, would be the, that would solidify that legacy. If he pulls that off. Oh. If he with, pulls that with off... With already the c- construction of his roster right now. Then, then I do think that you can say that, yeah, he might be the, the best GM yes. that we've seen in, in potentially the last decade. Yeah. And not to mention, yeah. too, you're going to see that Atlanta Braves squad win oh two, three, four more That's chips in insane. the next five to six years. Because you cannot have both of the MVPs... Uh, who mm-hmm. wins MVP? Who the fuck wins MVP then? <laughs> You know yeah. what happens if if imagine if, imagine cool. if they were on the exact same team yeah. this year yeah. and they did the exact same stuff. What the hell? Do you, we got to give two MVP awards now. Yeah, they got to yeah. share the MVP award. Yeah, yeah. That's it would be it would be so stupid and crazy if that was to happen. <laughs> but I mean, if the Atlanta Braves were to pull that off, dude, we're about to see the biggest dynasty yep. in baseball history. Oh, it's maybe. already becoming one of them. You know, yeah, Houston. Uh, I think Braves are right there. And, and, and I think honestly, they're kind of my favorite to land them at right now at this point. Yeah, well, because if if, yeah. he's ta- if he's actually serious about all he really cares about, and this does it's make sense, team. right? Be, you know, he's Joey Otani. He's been on a garbage team. Apologies, LA Angels fans, but he's been they on know. a garbage team yeah. for <laughs> you know his entire MLB career. He now wants to. He's going to make the most money in MLB history. So he's got all that checked. He's won. He's won multiple mm. individual awards. Mm. The only thing left on his Hall of Fame resume is getting the chip. So he's going to go to the best place possible. Yeah. That's the Atlanta the Braves. Braves. It's the Braves, guys. So here's the thing. I think we got a chance. I think that the front office is under a lot of pressure, but it is going to be hard to outbid the LA Dodgers and the Atlanta Braves yeah. and all of those guys. So what would you get? Because I was feeling like, oh, maybe the Jays have like a 1.5 percent chance of sure. getting Otani. What do you think of that? Like, dude, if I had to, if I had to put a number on it, like yeah, like two percent, you know, two percent, maybe two and a half. Maybe yeah, it's, it's, it, you know, <laughs> like, it is going to be very difficult to sell him on the fact that we are a better team and built to, to the succeed Braves. longer than the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, they're with Ronald they, Acuna going forty that, and seventy. That is the per because for Otani's window, he's got what 
I mean, it all depends on his age and how he you know ages uh, later on in his workload. But he's got the potential to have a, that winning window for the next eight years. 100%. You know what I mean? Like, 100%. They, they will be winning for yes. eight years in a row. Dynasty. Yeah. He will go to the playoffs every single, every single year. year. Let. Folks, let us know your thoughts about all of this in the comments down below. Quickly, before we sign off, Mitchell mm-hmm. Hopkins, is Bo actually available? Uh, I don't think so, no. dude. I think, no. you know, he says it seems like someone was just trying to get clicks. That's what I think, too, man. I think it was, it was I mean, dude, like, literally a Dodgers yeah. fan was just like, well, we need to make a trade for someone. Uh, Bo Bichette's good. Let's yeah. do that. And without and any it. thought or foresight at all. We're not trading Bubba Shack, guys. It's no, not gonna happen. Never gonna happen, guys. Guys, uh, shout out to everybody who's in the stream right here. Make sure you drop a like, hit the subscribe button, guys, and as always, go Jays go! Jays go!